Hey everybody, it's Michael. Hey, I wanted to give you a little update on the Baptist fan set, the Fab Five fan set. I am using them today on my client Dorothy's quilt and I use them all the time. And I know a lot of you have these now. It's by far the best selling item in my shop. So uh, there's a lot of these sets out there and I'm hoping that you're finding your own patterns and rhythms and techniques. And I'm just gonna briefly show you mine and give you a couple of tips, okay? So I'm in the middle of this quilt uh, and I'm starting with my three. Remember, I'm, I'm matching up the point here with um, the intersection of the last arc I just created and then the row below and matching up the stitching lines. And we look good and our pattern is down, up, down, up, down. So I'm going down. My method is, this was the three, my method is to take the five and use that to do the stitch over the previous row. Bring it up, match up the point, match up the stitch lines that are etched into the set. Go up. Bring in the seven and use that to stitch over my previous fan. Match up my point and match up my stitch lines below. Now here's something I wanna to talk to you about. I don't want you to spend too much time being precise always on the interior. Obviously, yeah, um, I said this is a precise set, which it is, but sometimes this is fabric and sometimes we're gonna get a little bit off. What you do need to do is match up the point with where you start. That should always be where it's supposed to be. If you're slightly off here, it's okay. And I'm gonna show you why. If this point is matched, do you remember that this is a circle? This arc is based on a circle. Therefore, as long as that point stays there, I can do anything I want to with this. I could stitch it right now and I'll get the same result as if I put these lines on the matching lines. So, the interior, nothing is based on these interior arcs to make things line up. What is based on making things line up is the final arc, the big one. That one needs to be precise and that one is what keeps things consistent across the whole quilt. So that's the little secret in case you didn't know. <laughs> Don't spend too much time trying to match up every single line here. Yes, you want it to be there, but if it's not perfect, never, never, never take out any stitching um, if, it, if it's just, you know, slightly off. So I would go ahead and stitch this. Even if it were off. And the illusion is our eye is going to think that these are consistent, even if they're slightly off. And that's okay. Okay, so I'm going to show you what I mean by using the 11 as your final in just a second. So... This is the nine. I'm using that to stitch over the row below. I'm matching up my point, which is the most important thing, and then my stitching lines. And see, I'm slightly off here, which is great, right? Look, I'm off. It's just like a 16th of an inch, but I'm gonna stitch it anyway. Go up here, okay, and now I'm using my 11. So this is my final arc. I'm gonna do everything I always do. I'm gonna match up that point there and I'm gonna get, make sure that this is as close as possible. This is great. So this is actually matching up perfectly with the row below, with this stitching line and with the point. That's what you need. This is what keeps everything consistent. So make sure that this 11, or if you're just using three to go three, five, seven, make sure the seven is consistent. You might, oh, here's another tip if I haven't done it in a video before. I marked this right line right here. That tells me exactly how much I have to backtrack to go back up on this final. Remember we went down on the last one, but we have to go down on the first. So that tells me how much I need to backtrack up. Maybe in future sets, I'll have that etched in, but that's something that you could do yourself. That's a fine chip Sharpie. But anyway, just enjoy if you want. If you want to fast forward while I stitch out the fans, that's fine. Um, and then um, I'll get uh, into some more detail when I do the swirl chain or the, the feathers. Okay.
All right, so I'm gonna do some stitching. Okay, I'm gonna work on the borders now. First thing I'm gonna do is a quarter inch echo just to divide, kind of section off the space, separate it from the main part of the quilt.
Okay. I'm gonna up my stitch length to 11. Um, okay, so the idea here is I'm gonna, I've decided to go ahead and do the swirl chain. <clears throat> so I'm gonna swirl, let's see, let's go in. I'm gonna swirl to my right, which is gonna look down to you. So it's gonna go down and then up. Um, so basically an elongated swirl, echoing, coming back around and um, I'll do a, a little bit of a fill, either a paisley or a leaf, let's see how my skills are today and what comes up. Okay, so I'm gonna go in and make the swirl. Echo, I echo on the inside. A few times, come down. Echo around the top. Here's where I'm gonna put in a little paisley. <laughs> go around the top and now this one is going to go up. Echo, I'm leaving space for binding. Here's where I'm going to put in a little paisley. A little teardrop there. Okay, this one. Take up the corner space like that. Echo on the inside. Okay, I'm gonna stitch the swirl chain again. Um, so, elongated swirl, first going down, come to the point, echo the inside, back down around, here, and now we go around the top of it, or it looks like the left to you, and I'm gonna put something here, this time it's an echoed paisley. Okay, around the top of it. And now this one goes the other direction. Put the inside, echo the inside. Come back down, another echo. And now we go around and we come back to here. This is the point when you come back here that you put in a filler if you want. Okay, this is, I took this directly from Angela Walter, so this is not my thing, but she says the V is where you wanna be. So if you come in here and this is the V, this is where you're going to either come back out and go the other way, or you're going to put a little something here. So I like to put a little something here, either a leaf, a little teardrop, paisley, whatever. And now you come back around and you start your next swirl. And that goes the other side. That's the way I do it anyway. Come back up. And go around. Now here we're at the V. We do a little paisley. Tears up and then move on. And now we go back this direction. This needs to fill in the corner, so I'm making it slightly larger. Back to where you're inside, back up, down, back go around, I'm at the V, filler time. Now this one I'm just going to come in, since we turn the corner, and change direction. I didn't go all the way back up on this one. Okay, I'm still echoing. Here's the D, put in a little something, and around, and my paisley, I mean, sorry, swirl there. Back around, here's the V, a little something. Okay, as we get here, I'm gonna stop because I'm gonna run out of space. Here are a few shots of uh, the finished quilt. Sorry I didn't get a full shot in, um, but Dorothy was happy with it. I gave it to her last week, and uh, that was on the 14th, I think. Um, no, it was on the 12th. The 12th of March. So today is the 20th, um, where I'm finally posting this video. But um, a lot has happened in that last week, so... Um, 
that was the last quilt guild meeting that we had in my area and um, future ones are canceled and uh, speakers are postponed because we're all at home so um, I hope you got some enjoyment out of this video and um, if you are at home like many of us it's a great time to be quilting right um, but it's also time to think about um, each other and I hope that you are being well taken care of and that if you are finding yourself in a good position that you are perhaps taking care of someone else okay um, anyway uh, I hope you have a fantastic day and you got some enjoyment out of this video and I will see you next time bye bye